Well, 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 we keep getting more interesting news on the Game Freak Pokemon Nintendo front these days, don't we? Because as of the 10th of this month, Game Freak released a Japanese statement on their website announcing that they had been hacked. Interestingly, this story wasn't picked up even by Twitter until today as of the recording of this video. Until a post today from Central Leaks announcing that they're currently covering a Terra leak of Game Freak data. So I want to quickly go through what's reported to be in leak and then I want to go into some speculation about, you know, the timing because, you know, the implication. Now, Eurogamer is reporting that the two most significant things in this leak are the code name for the Switch 2 and the source code for Heart Gold and Soul Silver. There's also some leaked internal data about a Detective Pikachu sequel as well as a planned trilogy of films, none of which seem to have materialized or are in production at this point. I gotta be honest, there's probably not too much value in a lot of these leaks because things change a lot internally. And let's be honest, those of us that have been alive long enough kind of know how Nintendo works at this point. They're gonna milk the Pokemon franchise by making more Pokemon games of a similar style, shutting down all their competitors and just relying on the incredibly loyal fan base. And the fact that once people buy the Switch 2, they're locked into the Nintendo ecosystem anyways, and there's no escaping. Now we know that Nintendo have been the victim of hacks in the past. They were hacked back in 2018, and I think the files weren't released until 2022. Of course, on that famous website that all Nintendo lovers hang out on, 4chan. The suspect in that leak was British hacker and Malwarebytes employee Zamis Clark, who was allegedly the perpetrator of the attack, and he was sentenced to a 16-month suspended sentence. Meanwhile, Ryan Hernandez, who leaked details about the early release of the Switch, was sentenced to three years in federal prison back in 2020. Safe to say that Nintendo takes these hacks very seriously even compared to other companies. I mean, let's be honest, it's Nintendo after all. But you've got to think at this point, especially amongst, you know, the fact that hackers tend to be free IP, you know, libertarian types as a general rule. I think Nintendo's legal actions have also made them sort of a target amongst the hacker community. Most big corporations are, by the way, but Nintendo seems to seems to definitely have a target on their back. And this seems to be a continuation of that, not to mention the fact that because Nintendo are so, so secretive about literally everything surrounding the company, that they'll literally destroy the lives of people who even leak that information to the public, criminally, mind you, that this sort of puts another target on their back, because if you do manage to hack them and do manage to leak the information, you're going to get a lot more eyeballs on you than if you leak the latest game from EA. Like, who cares, man? As of yet, there are no suspects in this case. Like I said, as of the making of this video, all this stuff just came out about 12 hours ago, and I'm recording this now a little bit blurry eyed because I massively overslept on this beautiful Sunday morning in England, which isn't beautiful. It's cold and rainy. Anyways, I digress. Okay, to the question that's got to be on everyone's mind, was this a potentially hacktivist reprisal for what has been done to Pocket Pair? I'm going to say the answer is probably no, but there is a sweet, sweet moment of irony after, you know, all of this surrounding uh, Nintendo's uh, patent rights and Nintendo's at least, uh, you know, in my opinion, and in many of the people that are subscribed to my channel, abuse of the, uh, or attempt at abuse of the US patent system. That's at least what I believe. I, I think if you go back and you watch my previous video on this, uh, Nintendo are trying to patent things that should never be patented under patent law. And uh, it's it's kind of, you know, ironic that now the source code for heart gold and soul silver is being leaked to the public allegedly and um because in the end not only have nintendo fiercely protected the idea of pokemon games being their sole purvey to allow to exist they have to exist within the nintendo ecosystem should they exist elsewhere they will be destroyed you know one can only assume that the reason games like yokai watch and digimon are okay is those tend to be within the nintendo ecosystem and a game like pal world is well outside of it look out tim tim thankfully no one cares about you so it's a bit ironic after you know they go after pocket pair but they've also gone after you know every fan game under the sun that's ever been made about pokemon even the ones that are released for free that aren't causing them any any direct harm uh they're going to uh to be you know have the source code now floating around for the pokemon games out in the public sphere that's going to make them very unhappy which doesn't make me unhappy i'll tell you that much if this were a form of hacktivism, I would be very surprised because generally with hacktivist things, you tend to get an announcement from the hacktivist group on some form of uh, public page like uh, 
generally it's something like a 4chan, isn't it? Or a, a Twitter post of some kind. As of today, the only public acknowledgement we have of this hack from anybody official is from Game Freak themselves, so I think that's likely not going to be the case. In the end, I don't support this kind of thing. I mean, really, I, hacktivism as a rule generally just makes the hacktivists feel like badasses and really just harms actual, you know, white hat and security hackers out there. Not a big fan of it, but you know, if it were if it were to happen to anyone at any time, you know, now would be a, now would be a hilarious time for it to happen, given given all the things that have been going on. As for the actual pocket pair Nintendo drama, I haven't seen any new kind of groundbreaking news. Uh, one funny little interesting bit of news is that pocket pair recently made a deal with the company that designs PUBG of all things to create a mobile version of the game. Uh, Krafton, who owns PUBG, recently also acquired uh, the Hi-Fi Rush developer Tango Gameworks, who were let go from Microsoft. So it's a bit interesting that even with all of this legal shebang pending, uh, the, po the, the Pocket Pair IP, or Pocket Pair's IP of Power World, is still being distributed by them. So, you know, should things kind of go down in court, it'd be interesting to see how all of this like ripples out legally amongst all the companies that now claim to be developing or working with the Pocket Pair IP more broadly. Because the way this works, presumably, right, is that Pocket Pair are getting money from people like Sony, Microsoft, and now Krafton to be able to make games in the Pocket Pair world, quote unquote. And uh, should they be successfully sued for damages about patent infringement with their gameplay mechanics by Nintendo, then presumably the money that they're making would then be seized by Nintendo. But then I think that raises questions about the continued use of the IP that has been purchased by companies like Sony and by now Krafton. And it's interesting to see that maybe it tells us something about the internal line of thought amongst uh, these game companies about maybe the potential success of Nintendo's lawsuit if they seem still ready to go ahead with games based on uh, the pocket pair intellectual property. Maybe as some commenters have said in my last video on this topic, maybe just maybe uh, there are some people, especially on the US rather than the Japanese side of this, who are looking at the things that Nintendo are trying to claim they own as gameplay mechanics and absolutely shaking their head. On the other hand, maybe this doesn't mean anything and maybe these deals were in the works since January, since maybe the release of the uh, PC version of Power World and you know, in the corporate world, it takes time for these things to get going. And maybe the industry hasn't really had a chance to respond to the lawsuit. I don't know, though. It does seem interesting that uh, this deal did this deal was announced moving forward. Regardless, I think there is something important to be said about this whole idea of patenting game mechanics. One of the things that really drove me mad about my initial videos on this topic was a lot of people wanted to play legalese to the point where uh, Forbes journalists were even making fun of gamers for not understanding patent law. Well, guess what? I don't need to know uh, about how first degree and second degree murder works to know murder is wrong. I don't need, uh, you know, a JD in patent law from Harvard to know that patenting in-game mounts that change based on whether you're on land or on sea is just kind of a bizarre thing to patent. My lack of expertise in patent law doesn't stop me from, you know, having an opinion on the immorality of a massive company. I would hope that we can all agree on that. Anyways, I think this video has gone on about as long as it's needed to. I apologies. I am my I am my apologies. I am still half asleep recording this video. It is a sleepy Sunday morning. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, do like and subscribe. I cover gaming news, predominantly Nintendo news at the moment because Nintendo keep being Nintendo and they shall for the foreseeable next hundred years. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace.